Welcome back to Have A Crack. Today we're looking at the camp setup that I use for the 76. We're pretty lucky these days that we've got so many options to set up your four wheel drive for camping. There's rooftop tents, there's swags, there's all sorts of things that you can do. You can even go and put a tent beside your vehicle. But what I've opted for with my 76 is a 30 second storm chaser awning with the walls. It's similar to a regular 30 second awning with a couple of exceptions. The main one being the vent holes in the roof that lets the wind through if the wind picks up a little bit. You can see one of them just here. And the idea of this is if the wind comes underneath, it gets let out through that gap without bending up the whole canopy. From memory, this was about 1300 bucks. So I ended up getting a wall kit and I'll show you that one in a second. But I did have a major, major issue with installing this onto the 76. But it had absolutely nothing to do with the awning, had nothing to do with the 76, and it had nothing to do with the wedge tail roof rack that I've got on here. It was, however, a combination of all of those things. If you haven't seen the video I've done with the, about the wedge tail roof rack, it's friggin' awesome. I've had it on here for a while now, absolutely love it. Totally stoked that I got that roof rack. Installing the brackets was very self-explanatory. You just line them up, put them in, tighten them up, Bob's your uncle, done deal. The problem that I had was with the vertical bracket braces on those brackets, the nuts sat out a little ways. And the 30 second awning is flat mounted. So I couldn't use the brackets that came with it because of the wedge tail roof rack. That's fine. There's lots of options around, but I got the wedge tail ones because it's a wedge tail rack. But where they butt up, it's flush. You've got to put holes in the awning cover to put the bolts through. And what happened was where I lined up the bolts on one side and on the other, it fit perfectly, but the nut that was on the wedge tail sat out a little bit and it bowed the whole bracing for the awning. That wasn't doable, so I had to take it off and find a better solution. I genuinely thought something was wrong with the awning or the brackets, so I contacted Wedgetail first because they're just based in Melbourne, and I asked them about how this is installed. If you've watched any of my videos before, you know that I love dealing with Aussie companies, and Wedgetail, Tradesman Roof Racks in Melbourne, they were no exception to this. They were incredibly helpful. They offered to send me these little braces, little brackets that would bring the awning out about 10 mil. I didn't want to bring it out any further. So I went and found a different bolt, you know, the, uh, what are they called, coach head bolts, you know, the rounded heads. So I've put that in there, talk it through. So it's only sitting out a bee's dick in a bit. And then I've put four bolts onto each bracket, mounting bracket, and it sits now nice and flush. Very happy with it. Very, very sturdy. It's probably more sturdy than what it was designed to be. Take 30 seconds to set up? Yeah, probably. Don't really care. <laughs> it's, no, it's called a 30 second awning and it takes roughly 30 seconds to set it up. But I don't think, I think we go down the wrong path with that whole 30 seconds and I can save, you know, 45 seconds here and a minute doing up my tyres over there. It doesn't sit right with What me. I mean is, just listen. There's nothing happening. I can hear some birds, hear some ducks. I'm down by the Gumbauer Creek in Kahuna, by the way. Ripper of a spot. Lots of people come here over the school holidays and so forth. But just listen to this. I'm the loudest dingbat out here. Nothing else is making any noise. It's nice and calm, it's chilled, there's no problems, there's no hurry to do anything. So if it takes you 45 seconds to set up instead of 30, who really gives a shit? <laughs> but really, it takes about 30 seconds to set it up. It's bloody easy, you need nothing, just the strap from the back of the vehicle or wherever you're gonna keep it. You can keep it in the, in the, uh, in the bag, I suppose. But really, it's, it's dead set easy to set up. I'm pretty happy with it so far. I've had this up in some reasonably good wind. I'm not sure what the speed of it all was, but it was a, a wind. I'll, I'll, I'll tell you a story. Before I had this awning, I used a uh, OCAM two and a half by three meters, I think it was, just a square awning off the side of the vehicle. And that was, that did its job, but it took me a while to set it up. It took me probably four, maybe five minutes, realistically. If there, and if there was a little bit of wind, Forget it, it wasn't happening. I wouldn't even bother putting it up because I wouldn't be able to get it up. And a friend of mine had the previous or the other, not previous, just this different model of the 30 second awning, just the regular one without the little wind vents in the top. 
and he came around to my place to set it up so I could see it before I laid down the money to buy this one. And it was blowing a bloody gale. And I thought, there's no way in the world I would try, even attempt to set up my awning in that. But he had no hesitation, put it up. It wobbled around a little bit, didn't peg it down. It was fine. And that just sold me on the idea. My thoughts around camping with this is, this takes next to nothing to set it up. They sell a wall kit, this 30 second awning company. They sell wall kits. I bought all this myself. There's none of this is sponsored or anything. I bought a wall kit, a full wall kit. So for about two grand, I've got an awning and four walls. And this is a 2.7 meter long awning. So it's a fairly big awning. I'll be able to set up, if it's raining, I'll set up my stretcher and my swag here. I can set a fire out there to cook at the end of it, just outside of it with the, you know, like the portable fire pits. Um, set up my kitchen right here, all underneath it, enclosed. If you've watched the video about the rear setup on this vehicle, you will remember that the switches that I've got up here, they're already wired in to the, to the lights here, for example, and that will turn these steady lights on at the rock lights at the back here. And you may remember I've already wired in some wiring to go to the awning lighting. Next up is the lighting, and I'm going to install a stick-on strip along where the canopy folds up to. These switches here control the lighting in and out of the vehicle, and this switch, which one is it? This one here, awning lights on the far left-hand side. That's gonna turn that switch on. So I've already wired wiring up to the top there. And the wiring came through just here. So this has been taped up now for a few weeks until I got the awning on. Run these two wires down. And I tied a knot, because they're two brown wires, I tied a knot in the live wire. So the idea is that I'll bring the wiring through a hole in the back strip along here, control a little bit higher, and we should be good. I was going to use this steady strip lighting for the same thing, uh, but it's pretty bloody bright. When I turn this on at night, and I've got one each side. When I turn that on, it's, uh, it's pretty bright. So I decided to get something different. I've got a hardcore one. Let me go get it and I'll show you what it is. I'll tell you what, through the build of this car, <laughs> my shipping container here was absolutely full of uh, four-wheel drive accessories and equipment. Um, I've got rid of most of it. Oh, here's the lights here. Hardcore, one meter stick on three color LED. And this will be one of the last things I've got to install on the vehicle for, for now. <laughs> it's never finished. So this is the packaging of the hardcore light. It's uh, what's it called? One meter stick on three color LED tape. Is that the only name? Looks like it is. It says here it's going to switch between orange, white, and somewhere in between, I guess. Two year warranty. What else has it got to tell us? Not really too much at all. Let's open the damn thing up. It's got more in here than I will need. Product warranty rest, uh, registration, no. All the superfluous marketing stuff. Now, the meat and potatoes of it all. Let's get rid of these ties. And if you're not familiar with these, this is going to give you uh, power to off and on, the mode that it's got, and up and down as far as the intensity and changing between the modes. So that's the controller for the lights. These are to push onto poles, so you could have the controller sitting on one of the upright poles on the awning if you really wanted to. But I'm gonna use some tape and hopefully I can stick that into the uh, awning when it's all folded up and it'll be done. This is an extension lead and I shouldn't need this because the, um, the lighting and the controller will be right next to each other. This is an extension lead, I don't need that either. So what I'm going to have to do is if you look at the ends of these, One's got a four pin, which is what's used to control the controller to the lights. So it will change the settings and stuff. This one here, this one's different. This is the power to get to the lights. And this here, gonna cut this wire here and splice this into the two wires that are on top of the vehicle. Done a little bit of preparation with the controller here. I've just taken off the end that goes into the cigarette lighter, bared a couple of wires, and that will hook onto the wiring that I've got at the top here. I'm gonna position this further towards the back of the awning, but not so far that it's going to be hindered by these. Um, all the arms that come out from the awning sit up a little bit higher, so this should sit underneath it. 
So I'm going to put it up there on the bottom, the bottom rung, if you like, of that awning, the awning bracket. Now all of the um, all these arms will come over the top of it, and it'll be fine. What I've done for the the controller. On the back of this here, I've got what's called alien tape. Alien tape is kind of like um, double-sided tape if you never, ever, ever want to take it off because this stuff is crazy good. I'll connect up the controller to the wire, to the lighting strip. The beauty of the alien tape is if this tape ever comes unstuck, I'll just stick it with alien tape. It'll be fine. Now, I want to have that somewhere like that there because the the brackets will come up above it to about oh, i might even go lower actually and put it on here i think i will do just that i'll take it out a little bit further this wiring will reach up to there no problem and stick it on now that it's not coming off anytime anytime soon now it's just a matter of putting a hole in the back of the awning bringing this wiring through soldering these together Robert, your mother's brother. Stuck all that up there now. I've just tied the wires together before I solder everything, just to be sure. And that works really well. Adjusts up and down. It's nice and bright. Happy days. Let's grab a couple of bits of heat shrink. So we'll need them. This one here's a bit too long, but it should be right. Get the heat shrink over that. Let's heat up this wire first so I'll get good penetration with the solder. That's going pretty well. That's the positive done. Do the same with the negative. Now that's done, I'll bring these uh, heat pieces of heat shrink over the top of each one. Slide it right over the top. I'll tape these together as well. Just use the soldering iron, the back of the soldering iron, that'll use it, that'll shrink the heat shrink. You might have seen here, you might have noticed already, very, very, very small diameter wiring here for these LEDs. They draw virtually nothing. They're very efficient power-wise. This is one of the awning walls that you get in the kit. There's four walls in an awning wall kit, a full kit. You can buy the walls individually. And if you have a 30-second awning, the previous model or the other model, a 2.7 one, these walls will fit it from that one to this one. They're interchangeable walls is what I'm saying. I just couldn't say it very bloody well. So the black strap there that you see is on the bottom of it. Just hold that up. Get that zipper. All the way down. all the way to the end. I'll throw another one on the back here. Actually, I'll throw all of them on to put it all together and I'll show you what the end result is. Well, those walls are just bloody easy to get on. I'll tell you what, they're very intuitive. As soon as you do it the first time, you'll, you'll never forget it. So four walls are on, hammered in some pegs. This dingbat didn't bring the extra poles to give it extra support. So it's a little bit slack. I don't want to pull it too tight because there's no extra poles there at the moment. Let me show you inside. One of the walls is a door wall. And it has this flap, the waterproof flap, and then a, a, a mosquito slash fly flap as well. In here, once it's set up, there is a bucket load of room here. You could easily fit a whole family in here camping, no problem. I reckon you could fit, oh, comfortably 12 people here, uncomfortably 30. There's a shit ton of room in here. The lighting works pretty bloody well. I've got four walls on here at the moment. You probably don't need to have four walls all the time unless you were there for a long time and the weather was going to be a bit, how's your mother? Um, so with the four wall kit, you get a door and two windows. I've got this one here opened up. That's where the light's coming from right now. 
the doors open up, this window's closed and the, the fourth wall is a solid wall. Like seriously, you could very comfortably, very comfortably spend a few days in the one spot here. This didn't take that long to set up, certainly quicker than a tent um, for a family and not probably not as quick as a rooftop tent, but hey, I'm like nearly 50 years old and I don't want to be climbing down from the roof every time I need to take a leak in the middle of the night. This is ideal. When I called these guys, when I actually ordered all this, this is another reason I like dealing with Australian company. They're based in Australia. I believe this is made in China. The, the company themselves are based out of Australia. They're based in Queensland. So when I ordered this, I ordered this, and the friend that I have that has a 30 second warning, he said, Shane, get extra poles. Whatever you do, get extra poles. So I ordered the wall kit and ordered extra poles, and stupid me, I didn't read the website correctly. And I had a phone call from 30 second warning, and they said, You've ordered the wall kit, it comes with extra poles. Did you want extra poles? We've got a feeling that you made a mistake. And that, for a web ordering system, when you have a person pick up the phone and call you, that's what I love dealing with Aussie companies. So what do you think? I think it's a pretty bloody good setup there. Um, be sure to subscribe to the channel because I'll be using this when I go away camping, filming more content for you guys, and you'll see how it performs in a real world situation. Let me know, do you use this sort of thing when you're camping set up, or do you use a swag, do you use a tent? Do you use a rooftop tent? I'm curious as to what you guys have and what you guys use, and whether you rate this or not, I think it's pretty damn good, especially for how much it costs. Anyway guys, that's it for today. Catch you later.